Hi, good morning everyone. Let's get started with our next topic in this training session which is on dual stack split. So basically dual stack split actually let me tell you what is a dual stack and why we need to split this. So in line with SAP strategy actually SAP was having both NetWeaver, ABAP and Java in the same system which was sharing the SID that is one common framework and one common database support for dual stack implementations for SAP NetWeaver was originally introduced with the intention to reduce the TCO and to offer more options for the layout of SAP systems to customers deploying and running SAP NetWeaver based products and solutions such as Business Suite. Initially dual stack system allowed customers to save database and application server hardware and software deployments by combining the ABAP and Java stack on the same physical machine. Sharing database and operating system resources, software lifecycle management process, in turn treated ABAP and Java stack as a unit when applying support packages, installing an enhancement pack. Okay, so here you can see that I have started a dual stack split tool. And in this tool, you can see that there are two different things. One is you can move the database. Another is you can keep the database. So move the database, basically dual stack, we are splitting a Java stack. We are removing the Java stack from this system and keeping it in some other system. So we have an option to move it, that is take it out from this system and put it in some other system or keep the database, that is we will just keep it and create an MCOD database instead of moving out from this particular system. So now as a step one is the export Java stack. We need to export the Java stack from this particular system. So what involves in exporting is we are taking an OSDB export. That is we are taking a database export at the OS level, at the database level. Here you can see that this export tool is asking for information about the profile location, the installation drive and in this particular screen, you can see that I need to provide the SID name. This being a combined SID, so just give the domain name as well and click on continue. So what happens is that we have selected the SID. We are supplying the password for the SID ADM. Okay, so the password is given and we will provide the information about the database as well so that it can connect to the database. So what you are seeing here is that we have started it, the export, uh, the dual stack split tool. Okay, so here some error message has come. So basically we'll, if we get these errors, the easiest thing is uh, close this window and basically look into the error messages. So error messages you'll find in a folder called uh, SAP INST, review the error and just click on next. Okay, so you have just click on the next and here you are supplying the password for the CDDM user. CD is say for example if your system is say DE1 so it becomes DE1 ADM. If your system is say DB1 it becomes DB1 ADM. Okay, now here you are providing the information about the database ID. So the database ID in this case is also the same, database host is the same and it's asking whether it's a rack system that is are we using application clustering on this. So it's not a rack system so I have not selected that option. Now here you can see the export location that is in which location the export dump of the Java database will be created. So I have creating an export folder and you can see that in this particular export folder all the dump will be created by this process. So I am creating a folder for this export and we will be providing this location as the input for the export. So let's go back to the this particular upgrade tool, this particular dual stack split tool where we have the export location. We will select the folder that we have just created. Okay, so once the folder is selected, there is an option that manually stops the system. So we'll just click on 
continue by selecting that option okay so we are basically moving ahead after selecting this particular option now it's telling that do we do you want to disable the AS Java as well because dual stack system will have the AS Java in its profile so we'll just click on disable Java so the Java part will be disabled that is the parameter in the profile folder will be disabled so on the screen you can see the summary of whatever we have selected so far okay and we'll just click on continue here you can see that this particular tool is running right now so what is happening is that it's these are the steps which are getting executed what are the steps export java stack database and system export and next is prepare to export java after that we have the java database size calculation so it will generate the db size file so based on that the the other system wherever will be importing this export dump the database can be created based on that now in this particular step what is happening is that the export from java database is, is going to happen so basically the actual export is taking place in this particular step so this takes time depending on how much data you have in your java stack so how heavily you are using your java stack and how complex your java stack is so depending on the size of the db size that is created so in the previous step you can see generate java db size file so based on the size of the db stack which is present export will take that much amount of time so let it take some time so in the meantime what we'll see is that we will see how why we need to split this dual stack implementation okay so this export is running in the live system so i will just continue with this particular option basically i will just explain you guys on what is the implement implication of uh, dual stack split and what are the disadvantages so while the benefit and advantage of dual stack implementation offered value and helped to reduce and manage the operational cost for certain cases and aspect many of the offered benefit were only one time benefit such as reduced effort in implementation and could also be achieved with single stack systems so basically by running both abap and the java schema of two single stack systems in the same database with multiple components in one database that is mcod also new technologies such as virtualization have been introduced in the recent years that offer capabilities on a more appropriate level of abstraction in addition the tight coupling between the abap and java stacks become more and more an innovation hurdle because it becomes difficult to keep pace with both abap and java developments and they need to be go hand in hand for any upgrade or any migrations or any changes or any service pack upgrade so that is the one reason why it is decided to split this so that we can have a separate strategy for this so as a consequence sap netweaver recommend that customers avoid optional dual stack deployment where possible so wherever feasible just make sure that we are not deploying any new dual stack implementations wherever possible so where it cannot be possible is only two instances are there one is the solution manager which is a dual stack system and the other one is the pi that is basically sap's pi product where you have the different java based and abap based components in the same system but pi also they have come up with a pure java based flavor for it so that the development can take seamlessly in a java stack only for that particular component so rest all products they can be installed separately java stack is separate abap stack is separate and they work differently so basically sap offered software logistic tool just just such as dual stack split tool to separate the abap and java stack so that's what we are doing right now basically we are using a tool which is supplied by sap 
to split the java stack we could have manually done it but it's the there are chances of errors are there so th just to make sure that we are avoiding all those errors we use this tool because in this tool what happens is that we are providing the input depending on the existing environment so based on that what happens is it will capture the information about what is actually present in the system say for example what are the inputs we gave we gave the input about the profile location we gave the input about the SID the database SID the information about the disabling of Java from the profile folder so that type of information which is pretty standard and chances of errors are, are pretty less so that is the reason SAP came up with a tool which using which you can split your Java stack so here you are splitting the Java stack you are taking an export as a step one that is the export will capture all the information to create a new Java instance in either in a separate system or it is in a separate database within the same system but they will not be any more sharing the SIDs so basically now it is at a stage where it is trying to archive the SAP kernel so kernel basically whatever the files are there for Java based kernel so it will put that in the export dump folder and record whatever export is created for the database for the kernel and other information all that is clubbed together in the export folder and it will be exported out and we can import this into wherever we want to import this particular Java stack so that is basically how the export process works and why SAP has come up with a strategy to segregate the BAP and the Java stack so I think by now you guys would have got the idea about what is required to split the system into two stacks wherever we have two stacks so basically the dual stack split process involves the following phases step one is separation of Java stack that is separation of Java stack of dual stack source system into new system with the dual stack split tool so SAP they have offered two options that we saw keep DB option that is a MCOD option move DB option that is a new Java instance is installed in a new additional database and post split activities usually depends on the usage type and software unit okay so then lastly is about the removal of the Java stack so once the split is done we need to remove that particular Java stack so that is the last step basically so we will be getting into that step uh, pretty soon so once the part one is complete so in this particular process what we have done is we are doing an export of the Java system from the dual stack system so export is it's getting completed pretty much the the tool is about to complete so that's all pretty much I wanted to cover in this particular session so just to recap what we have seen here is that we have started the dual stack split tool we have selected the option to move the database and we have selected the option to export the Java instance so once the Java instance is exported you will see all the export in it export location folder and once the export location once the export tool completes it we will be moving that into the new system okay that's all i wanted to cover in this particular part one session for the java split tool thank you for joining and have a nice day hi good morning everyone let's get started with the part two of the dual stack split tool so basically so far we have seen that how we can export the data out of a dual stack split system in this particular training we will see how we can delete the java stack from the system once the export is completed once it is imported into a remote system once the java stack is installed in the remote system so then we work on removing the java stack from the system so basically we are going to start the sap INST 
so using this we will be splitting the java stack system from the dual stack split system so here the tool is started okay so now in this tool as we have seen in the part one that is how we have taken the export from the system so in our case it's a central system and now in part two we are going to remove so we have selected a remove option here so while in the remove option what will happen is that the java instance which is there in the system will be removed so we will be left with only the ABAP instance so that will take care of the completion of the split part because our main objective of running this particular tool is to remove the java stack so here you can see that i am selecting a right profile so once the profile is selected just click on the next tab okay so here you can see the location where the profile is present in the next screen it asks for the cdadm password so let's provide the cdadm password okay so basically it is validating the cdadm password so once the validation is done successfully you will see this screen where you are providing the database id okay then the database host and information about if it is a rack system or not so on completing this information basically it will check whether you want to delete using which particular account so our objective is to remove the selected instance so here you can see the instance which we are going to remove basically we are going to remove the schema for java which is sap sr3db you can see what is the data files which is in involved in this and here you can see that these are the different activities this is the summary of the activities basically this is you can see is the status of the execution of the removal of java stack so as a step one you can see what is being performed step two you can see what we are doing basically we are doing the cleanup and the respective activity will be performed to remove the java stack from the system okay so the tool is running basically it will take care of removing and commenting out the parameters related with the java stack from the profile folder it will take care of deleting the schema for the java instance it will take care of removing the data files related with the java instance so this will make sure that anything related with java is removed the kernel related with the java is removed all the files the applications which is deployed as part of java stack is removed from the system so java instance service is removed from the from the services file and here you can see that the dropping of the instance takes place removal of instance service takes place removal of instance directories takes place removal of instance profile relevant with the java instance takes place and it drops basically it can drop the database as well but in our case we are not going to drop the database because this database is having the abap instance as well so we will not select this drop database option so so basically at high level what we have seen is how we can split a dual stack system the reason why we split the dual stacks is because sap's strategy is to get away from the dual stack strategy sap is no more going ahead with the dual stack strategy so any upgrade so for an upgrade it is very important that we convert the system into a single stack system so that is going to be the strategy from 7.3 and 7.3 ehp onwards ehp1 onwards so it's going to be a strategy that if it is a dual stack system we have to split it 
and then only the upgrade for that can be performed especially in say for example if we are going to hana we have to split the system if we are upgrading a 7.3 system system we have to split it so anything after 7.3 say sp5 onwards there is no no more dual stack so we have to split it then only we can continue with any uh, upgrades so otherwise what happens is that dual stack systems with dual stack systems it is becomes very difficult to follow the standards which sap has come up with based on their strategy for the java instance so the reason one of the key reason is because the patches and the development which is done for abap and java systems is very different and to take them together during each upgrade cycle each uh each patch deployment process and to run them together to keep pace with the java instance it is difficult it it's difficult and given that the skill to manage and maintain a java instance is totally different than skill to manage and maintain an abap instance so it's pretty much advisable to split and remove the java instance because it slows down the development process it slows down your upgrade strategy it slows down the support process even if you log a ticket with a cp the support staff is mainly they are either the abap people or the java related people and it's difficult to find people who is maintaining and supporting both the environments but basically they who are providing the support for say during our upgrade or during our migration or during any issues so it become difficult to find out exactly where the problem lies so that is one reason why sap is getting away from the dual stack strategy so in the summary you can see that task progress you can see that all these activities is completed so last step is it is dropping this particular schema which is it which is psap sr3 db schema so you can see that it is completed successfully right then that's what i wanted to cover in this particular training session thank you for joining and have a nice day